Hello everybody and welcome back to the Pokemon Let's Go Let's Play. Last time, uh, we pretty much just walked through a tunnel for a bit, fought some trainers, and now we're here at Rock Tunnel, which uh, we must get through in order to reach our next destination. Uh, so let's just move on. Yes, we'll be going through a cave and... In fact, I think that's probably what's going to be happening a lot this episode. Oh god, it's dark. Oh, well, that's why we have this. Ah... And lo, is it already better than Flash? Oh dear God! Oh! <laughs> Did not need to. Actually, no. We probably should catch it just for the experience. Golbat's huge. <laughs> yeah, that's terrifying. It's the fact that its mouth is always open. I think that's yeah. The... I love it how its evolution actually changes. It actually is able to close its mouth. <laughs> I think Golbat can close its mouth, like it does it in Pokemon Stadium. I think it just chooses not to. It chooses to look like a horrifying monstrosity. This game is great when it's like when you just see huge ones just pop out of the ground. I don't think Sword and Shield actually had that as much. Like, it had, obviously, all the smaller Pokemon. I don't remember, like, the bigger ones popping out of the ground just to just give you a bit of a fright. I think that I think they popped up mostly in the wild area. Yeah. I remember quite a few times where I was just strolling around and I turned the camera and there's just a Steelix there. And I'm like, ah! It's when they chase after you is when you're like, oh, God. Oh, yeah, that happened to me a few times. Those were always terrifying. That's actually something to talk about. Thank you for that segue. Um, the wild area and raids from Sword and Shield. Do you think they could uh, come back in future games? Uh, I think they can. I think the wild area was not uh, fully realised as it could have been in Sword and Shield. Hmm. Because it's only really like in the in the middle of the continent almost. It's not really as big as you'd think. Exactly. So it's definitely room for improvement. And have you done raids, Michael? Oh yeah, I did a few raids. Uh, I didn't get to. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I didn't get to do them with actual people very often. It was always with the bloody AI. Yeah, because the the internet for Sword and Shield is probably. I actually think it's worse than it's worse than X and Y. That was several generations ago. Yeah, it's not great. So yeah, it, I agree. Like I. I've been able to do it a few times when I've been lucky enough to actually find some groups, but most of the time it has been with the AI, and the AI is dumb. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, okay, we're facing off against a giant Magneton. Who have we got in the team? A person with a Magic Cup, a person with an Eevee that's always using Helping Hand every turn. Spoiler warning, it's not helping. And a Soul Rock that does nothing. Yeah, that Soul Rock could, like, kiss my ass. <laughs> Soul Rock never helps. None of them ever help. So, but the raids themselves are actually quite fun. Like, I really do enjoy them. So I hope that they come back in the future. Yeah, raids conceptually are fine. Just need better internet. Mm-hmm. Better internet, better... Like, I get why they did the teams the way they did. It was like, okay, we don't want you to rely on just the AI. But there was no middle ground. Yeah. It's like... It's like you have actual teammates who are actually useful and actually can beat the Pokemon. Or you have the AI who are completely brain dead and useless. I think I remember the only time I actually had like a human teammate. They were obviously somebody who had already beaten the game because they sent out their level 100 Cinderace. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> that was kind of hilarious. I think I've been in one where I was like literally I was the only one who wasn't using an, a legendary. Yeah. <laughs> I was using Teleon and everyone else had the two dogs and Internatus. I was like, oh, fair enough. <laughs> Man, can you imagine like if you just started the game and like you see somebody send out Eternatus, they'd be like, what the fuck is that? Don't, that actually happened. Like I went to um, one of like the lower, the lower ones because like, okay, this one has a Pokemon I actually want. And there was like one person who very clearly had just started with a, t with, a with the one of the starters. And then this person threw out Eternatus. I'm like... I like just to be there, that person just seeing that monstrosity of a dragon, just go, what the hell's that? <laughs> now to capture this Rhyhorn. Could you encounter Rhyhorns in Rock Tunnel in the original games? 
No, I don't think so. I think Rhyhorn came much later. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you didn't encounter it until the Safari Zone. Yeah, that's it. Like, I'm not complaining. I love Rhyhorn, so... Yeah. What did you think of Rhyhorn, uh, Rhyhorn's third evolution? Uh, Rhyperia. Yeah. Uh, I think it grew on me as the years went on. Like, I, I, don't, I think I wasn't big on it at first, but I, I, after a while I was like, oh, you know what, it's fine. I think I got one for, like, X, X and Y. Like, I actually got a, a ride on through Wonder Trade and it evolved into Rhyperia. <laughs> and it, I made it part of the team and it was so goddamn useful. I was lucky to get it, but when I actually got it, I was actually really happy with it. It was a generation that had brought in a lot of new evolutions for previous... Well, I say previous gens. Gen 1. Yeah. So you had that one, you had um, Magmar's evolution. I can't remember its name. Uh, Magmorta. Magmorta, that's it. Just as a giant cannon strapped to its arm. It's like, you know what? Fair enough. Simple design, just like Gen 1 as a whole. Alright, what shall we call this Rhyhorn? Well, Horn. Rhino. Rhinox. Autobot. Oh, Autobot the Rhyhorn it is. That could have gone on, <laughs> that could have gone better, but whatever. <laughs> I just wasn't expecting Rhino, so I just kind of panicked and went with the Beast Wars character. <laughs> I think that was a lot of our favourites from that sh that show. Yeah, oh yeah, Rhinox was the best. Rhinox and um, Dinobot as well. I am going to refrain myself from bitching about what Beast Machines did to Rhinox so we can just move on. <laughs> uh, I love it back... This was a long time ago, an episode of Entertainment Dome, and we had a, a friendly argument. I was like, oh no, I, I liked Beast... <laughs> Beast Wars. And you were like... <laughs> no, Be Beast Wars is fantastic. Beast machines. No, I'm not going into that. Just fight this loser. <laughs> this guy likes beast machines. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, his intro dialogue? I love beast machines. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know what I expected him to send out. Like, I really should have prepared better. Oh, yeah, I just fought a fighting type. Oh, well, well done, Cadbury's. Cadbury's just that good. <laughs> and there goes the slowpoke. <laughs> oh. Like, I know we've always said that, um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that face. <laughs> oh my god, that's... that's... <laughs> perfectly horrifying. You know, he's he's committed to the role, I'll give him that. It's always trying too hard. It's a huge Dio dude. You couldn't tell, but it's huge. Trust us, it's bigger than... New it's slightly larger than average. Maybe that's what they should do in the next one. Well, not maybe. They, they should do in the next one. Actually show different sizes for the Pokemon. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think it's really needed. Yeah, but then it, it's kind of pointless saying, it's huge. It's like, but I don't see that. But like, does it does it being a different size make any difference to like its stats or anything? I suppose it could be stat-wise or change it a little bit. Just visual. Visually, it'd be nice as well. Just having a Geodude that's huge. I mean, that would terrify pretty much everything. Just a giant Geodude coming towards you. Or can you imagine, like, a slightly larger than average Onyx? <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> An Onyx the size of Rayquaza. Ugh. <laughs> Oh my god, there are wild gravelers in here? Oh yeah. 
I do appreciate that in Sword and Shield, I think they actually did have some of the tradable Pokemon catchable. Because I think the first time that happened was with Steelix in... Uh, was it Gen 4? You mean the trade evolutions? Yeah. It's nice to have. It's nice to have if you're unable to actually trade them. Yeah, exactly. Oh, don't get me wrong, it's easier these days because of the internet, but it's still... The thing is, though, with the internet, you can't really guarantee, like, you know, if you send you send your Onyx to a random stranger and then it evolves to a Steelix, you're like, oh, great, okay, can you send my Steelix back? Guy? Hey, where'd you go? Guy? I'm sure I'll be back later. Gohan? Where'd you go, Han? <laughs> no, Gohan's a good boy. He'd trade back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we got a Cubone. Yeah, just a reminder, where's the skull of its deceased mother? It, its cries echo inside the skull and come out as a sad melody. What cruel god made this creature? Damn you, Arceus. <laughs> Damn you, Game Freak. <laughs> Same thing, is it? <laughs> yeah, that should be... The, they should introduce a Pokemon above Ar Arceus and call it Gamma Freak. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> All right, let's see. What shall we call our Cubone? Well, bone. Skull. Uh. <laughs> Head. <laughs> Shoulders. Wow, I my brain just <laughs> shut down after skull. I did not. I, <laughs> I had no. Because my well, here's the thing though. Because I said bone, and then you said skull, and then I was about to say bone again, and I'm like, no, I can't say bone twice. For one moment, I thought he was going to say Ryuji from Persona Five. Shit, that would be a much better name. Both Cubone and Rhyhorn I would love to add to the party, but because I only want to have, like, you know, one type of each Pokemon uh, in the party. Uh, oh, crap, I didn't mean to go up the ladder. <laughs> Whoops. But yes. Oopsie. So I would have liked to add Cubone or Rhyhorn to the party, but honestly, at this point, Gravel I feel like Graveler's going to be a mainstay for the time being. Pro probably, uh, I'm going to be honest, thinking about it, I think the team we have now might be the team we'll keep for the rest of the game. Because all the Pokemon we keep capturing are like, they, they, we get them at like lower levels than the current party. Yeah, and it's also, the team we have is just kind of better in a way. Yeah. Each of them works off really well against each other. Against each other? With each other. If I say against each other, that's not right. Then again, we don't know what the drama's like in our party. Uh, I like to think they all get... I think maybe S.H.I.E.L.D. is, like, the outlier. <laughs> he's the Vegeta of the group. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, he's the Vegeta of the group. That's my head cannon. <laughs> oh, poor Cubone. I was about to say, Cubone doesn't appear this early either. I think... Doesn't Cubone appear first in the tower? In the um, Lavender Town Tower. Maybe. Like it was a, a rare, rare spawn in the tower. Oh god, I just thought the Pokemon were going to capture in that damn tower. Well, it's just going to be nothing but ghosts, isn't it? Yep. Ghastlies and Haunters. How big are the Haunters going to be? Huge. There we go. Really gonna need to stock up on some Great Balls later because the Pokeballs at this point are becoming pretty useless. Yeah. It's much like the other games where it's like, oh yeah, but need to even though the Pokeball is like the main is the main thing of Pokemon, it's also the most useless. I mean, I, I will always remember playing Black 2 and White 2, and uh, I caught Qrim in a Pokeball. Really? Yeah, well, I was throwing Ultra Balls at it, and nothing was working, so I went, and I was, I was running out, and I said, you know what, screw it, let's try a Pokeball, and it got it. Well, that shut me up. <laughs> yeah, I know, I was I was expecting it either. And hello, Kangaskhan, I was not, expect what? <laughs> was not expecting you. This guy's going against the gimmick. Ah, 
damn flinch. Friggin' fake out. It's only good when I use it. Only I'm allowed to use the good moves. <laughs> the one time I should have kept shield in. Yeah, actually. It's because the last one was like, okay, it's going to be Slowpoke again because he's dressed like a Slowpoke. Oh, it's a Kangas. See, this guy's clever. He's like, really? You, you thought I was going to use a Slowpoke just because I'm dressed as one? Not an idiot. <laughs> Full sense of security right here. I wish Shield's got the level up anyway, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so don't, please. <laughs> <laughs> Now we're going to put S.H.I.E.L.D. back in and there's going to be another Psychic type. Yeah, exactly. It's like, bugger it, we can't win. Oh no, it's a fighting type by the looks of it. A question. Do we ever use dire hits or any, any of those items? I personally never use them. Nope. <laughs> Always found them completely pointless and a waste of a turn. Aha! I knew you would have a rock type, because we're in Rock Tunnel. Aha! Our shield looks so dinky compared to that giant onyx. I know. I'm not going to lie, if that knocked out shield, I would have been so mad. Maybe Seismic Toss will work, because it's like... Seismic Toss uses the weight of the opposing Pokemon, doesn't it? Uh, no it doesn't. Seismic Toss's power- Oh Lord, Shield! Ooh. Seismic <laughs> Toss's power is dependent on the Pokemon's level. So, ah, right. the higher level Shield is, the more powerful it's going to get. Fair enough. Took it out, just barely. Shield, how did you lift an Onyx off the planet? <laughs> Second question, how did you do that while we were in a tunnel? He just smashed through the tunnel roof. Yeah. That's why that black belt had that face. He was like, what the shit? <laughs> like, what's the... I'm assuming people who like train in like, karate and martial arts, they must look at their Pokemon and just like, why do I bother? Why do I bother learning martial arts when my Pokemon will always be better than me? <laughs> Although saying that, that um, cartoon short with... um. Uh, is it Bea from... Uh, B. Sword B from Sword and Shield. When she's fight, She's taken on a bloody Mar her Marchamp on her own. It's like, Jesus! <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, those Twilight Wing shorts are honestly quite good. Hmm. They've probably given the characters more characterization than the bloody game did. It didn't help that B was only in one version of the game as well. Yeah, exactly. So that's why I really liked the B short. It really uh, went to it, gave her a lot more depth. Like her from Sword and ah, oh, who's the who's the Ice Lady from Shield? Uh, Melanie, I believe her name is. Yeah. But um, uh, hang on a sec, I need to concentrate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got this, Michael. Thanks. <laughs> but yeah, uh, B B's counterpart for Shield was uh, Alistair the Ghost Guy. Yeah. Who's nowhere near as interesting as B. <laughs> I mean, you know, maybe we'll get a Twilight Wing shorts that will uh, explain his backstory. Maybe. I hope so. I think it's ever since Black and White, when we had all of the gym leaders come in to help fight <laughs> Team Galactus, it's like... Yeah, on honestly, Black and White probably ha has handled the gym leaders the best. Yeah, easily. I mean, I still liked how they were handling Sword and Shields. Uh, definitely a step up above, like, uh, the Diamond and Pearl gym leaders, for example. Oh, yeah. Or, like, the X and Y gym leaders. I barely remember any of those guys. I like the idea that they actually... It's almost like football teams. Like they have they actually have rankings and everything. And they're always fighting against each other to get the, the ranking, and they end up all competing in the Pokemon League. It's like, that's really cool. We should all be saving this for if we ever do a goddamn Sword and Shield commentary. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, just going back to the Twilight Wings thing, actually. If I, if I do have one complaint for those shorts. What's that? No British accents. 
Yeah. Like, the region is based on the UK, and yet everyone has an American accent, and it angers me so much. Get some English voice actors. I like Keith Silverstein as an actor, but like... <laughs> So do I. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. Like, he's a, f he'd be f a fine voice for Chairman Rose if Rose wasn't meant to be British. So. <laughs> I've heard Keith Silverstein do an English accent before. I honestly would probably prefer it if, even if they were bad, even if they were bad English accents, I would have uh, taken that. Oh, you'd love JoJo Part One then. Oh no, because I've heard uh, JoJo Part One, and I like not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Keith Silverstein plays um a uh, speed wagon. And he and he does the proper Oh blimey mate! <laughs> um I might have to give that a look. <laughs> like it's like oh Keith you're trying, but mm. <laughs> Honestly, ideally, uh what they should have done, uh if they were actually gave Sword and Shield voice acting, they should have got the Xenoblade localization team to do it. Yes! <laughs> but then it, there's so many roles Adam Halden could play. Just have everyone played by Adam Halden. Adam Halden. <laughs> <laughs> In all seriousness, though, I'd like that. I mean, getting the whole Xenoblade team, that's just had him held and playing everybody. <laughs> it's like, okay, we heard you want the Xenoblade team, so we're getting the Xenoblade 2 team coming in. You know what, I'd still take that. By the end of Xenoblade 2, I did actually start to really enjoy the voice acting. It was still rough in a lot of places. I, was, I think that's the thing about Zero Bay 2. It's still got a good cast, it's just rough in a lot of areas. Yeah, I, I think not many of them were used to doing video game uh, performances. I think it was a mixture of that and some of it was down to direction as well. Yeah. So it was very clearly not the right direction for certain scenes. I think one of the, few, the ones that was like consistently great in every single scene was um, Zeke's voice actor. Zeke and Morag, yeah. Zeke, Morag, and, um, ah, uh, Dromark. Oh, yeah. Because, but that's because he's play, he's played by the same actor who play, plays Vesemir in Witcher 3. Is it Darren DePaul? I can't remember. No, it's not Darren DePaul. Okay. Actually, I'm going to look that up right now. Also, I was bitching in the last part that Trogdor seriously needs to learn some better fire moves, and now he knows a dragon move. Well, damn. <laughs> That's going to be very helpful for later on. There it is. It's William Roberts who played Vesemir and Dromark. Okay. And he's great, so... Oh, yeah. Especially as Vesemir, and I will never forget Vesemir. At least we finally found an area where Melt gets to uh, show his stuff off. Finally. <laughs> Because he ain't going to be doing that at the next gym. No. <laughs> I'm trying to actually think. Like, it, not until Blaine, really. Yeah, also, oh, did you see Fruit got stuck behind that hiker and was just rolling in place <laughs> for ages? Help me! <laughs> the hiker's just standing there like, what are you doing? <laughs> Can I help you, sir? Snap out of it, sir. I meant to say this at the beginning of the tunnel as well, because I remember we complained last time about how it seems really unnecessary to have this flash move in the game. And it's like, I feel like now I can like properly explain why, because we enter the tunnel and it's like, oh, the tunnel's pitch black, you can't see anything. Ah, oh, but you have the light up move, so now you can see. It's like, okay, but why couldn't we just have the tunnel not be in pitch blackness? Like, my... Mining still had like lights, so like, you just put like, like it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be bright, but it's you'd still be able to see your way through the mining tunnels. I don't think you'd even need a justification. Just say, say like, oh here's rock tunnel. Oh it's dark. Like it's not, not even have it be dark. Just have it be another tunnel. Oh god, uh, just <laughs> oh Jesus, have it be another tunnel. 
I, I feel like that's the only reason why they did it. It's like, oh, how do we make this tunnel stand out from the other tunnels? Make it pitch black. Okay, but now the player can't see anything. Oh, we like give them a move that were uh, that that lights the area up, and we are officially out of great balls. Oh crap! I think it's also. It's still like, oh yeah, it's like Gem 1 had Flash, but we don't want to do Flash exactly, so let's do it like this instead. It's like, uh, just get rid of it. No one liked Flash. <laughs> it just seems incredibly unnecessary. It's like, you could have just removed the Flash technique entirely and have the tunnel just be, you can just see in it. I think all of us would be happier with that. Oh, Gravel has found something. Yeah, what have you found, buddy? Or do you just like the rocks? Yeah, just, just <laughs> <laughs> really fruits. Oh. It was a big rock. <laughs> I had to. I'm trying to think what we'll see in other caves at this point, because I feel like this is really the only ones we're going to get. I think after Rock Tunnel, there's no other ca cave-like areas, really. Oh no, there is um, the cave in Articuno. And, Vic and Victory Road. Yes, of course. Oh yeah, Victory Road, of course. I look forward to see... I hope they get a bit like... You know in um, the... Heart Gold and Soul Silver, when you got the legendary birds in those, when they got like a little cutscene. Oh, I think they have them in here. Good, that'd be good. Especially for Zapdos. The best of the free birds. That's a point, because I do want to show off the legendary birds in this playthrough, but I don't know... I mean, Articuno's and Moltres uh, encounters will happen pretty naturally. Because we, I think we, actually no, I don't think we have to go to Seafoam Islands. That's an optional area entirely. Yeah, I think Articuno's, Articuno and Zapdos are the optional ones. I think it's only Moltres you'll definitely get to see. Uh, we'll figure it out as we go along. It's, it's weird. The worst of the bird trio is the one you'll probably get to see the most. Because Articuno is part ice type, so it's effective against flying. Zapdos is part lightning, effective against birds. And then you got Moltres, who is not to either. <laughs> yeah, I think of the three, Moltres is probably my least favourite legendary bird. Oh yeah, easily. Mine was always between Articuno and Zapdos. I think Articuno kind of won it. I think I might prefer Zapdos. I do like Zapdos. I think Zapdos was the one I always went for, but I think it's I like Articuno's design a bit more. Like a bit more serene looking, a bit more... Yeah, a bit more serene and noble looking as opposed to Zapdos' more chaotic looking design. You mean the spiky big bird from Sesame Street? Yes, essentially. <laughs> I'm actually really looking forward to seeing what their uh, Galar forms are in the Sword and Shield DLC. Yeah! Like, Zapdos looks like a cassowary, which means it might actually lose the flying type because. It'll be. Well, then again, Doduo Do Do and Dodrio is also based on emus and cassowaries and they can still fly but yeah i look forward to seeing what they do with them do you remember because i think in the um original plans for the first pokemon games like i think i remember reading somewhere that bird types were going to be in the game so we, we were going to have flying and bird types i think which i think it's probably for the best that they just ditched bird type and just kept it as flying yeah i think it was a bit too specific yeah Oh my god! <laughs> Melt melted that onyx. Oh god, the bubbles, they burn! <laughs> yeah, do you think, like, if you ever had to, like, give your onyx a wash or something, it'd just be screaming all the time? <laughs> oh, Jesus. No, you'd have to give it a mud bath. Yeah, maybe that's how they get clean with mud baths. Yeah, mud, mud or dust baths, because, yeah, like... <laughs> could you imagine that trying to give... Also, how would you give it a wash? Like, it's huge. You couldn't have it in a bathtub or anything. You get the whole family involved, just get, like, a hose. Yeah, you really, like, get your onyx out in the garden, get, like, the hose, and be like, okay, it's the time for a wash. And it's like, no, master, please, it burns. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
I'm trying to think. Was there a Pokemon episode that poke? There was a Pokemon that like resisted its own weaknesses. Uh. What did I just dream that? I'm not sure. I can't think of an episode like that. I know I remember there was an episode where um, I think it was Pikachu against Starmie. It wasn't Misty's. It was another one, and it actually resisted it. And there was another episode. This was um, very early days of Pokemon. It was when they went to that 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 preppy school. Oh yeah. And uh, yeah, it was Starmie against this Graveler, and this Graveler just knocked off the water, but like it was nothing. Yeah, actually, because I think I remember in that same episode there was a, uh, I think Misty actually fought another kid with her Starmie against his Weeping Bell and won. And I think that I think that was mostly done just to sort of demonstrate how, uh, bec again, I'm going to reference uh, Swade's Pokemon Journey, which if you couldn't tell from the way I keep bringing it up, you guys, you guys should all definitely watch if you're watching this now. You should. They're very good. Yeah, it's very entertaining. Um, uh, Swade said that that was uh, probably done so as to demonstrate how the battles in the anime work differently to the ones in the games. Because, you know, there is that. Even to this day, we still go, How could Pikachu lose to a Snivy? It doesn't make any sense. It should be level 100. Or like in the uh, the first Pokemon movie when Pikachu electrocutes a golem. Yeah, that was bullshit. <laughs> They actually changed that in the uh, the movie. Oh, did they? Oh, in the um, the CGI remake. Yeah, they actually he actually doesn't use a golem. I can't remember what he uses, but he uses Pinsir, Venomoth, and something else. Okay. I haven't watched the movie fully. I still need to. Well, I say still need. I don't know. I mean, didn't you say you stopped watching because you hated it? No, I stopped watching because I just wasn't in the mood. I think I was like, just like, oh no, I've. No, it's because I want to watch it with you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not for a, a commentary of it, just be like, just to get our opinions on it. Yeah. We've already covered the first movie, you should go listen to that. <laughs> March up, I, I've got like over a hundred. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> I was about to say, did that March up just taunt us? <laughs> Maybe. Okay, what is it, Fruit, if you found another rock that you're in love with? Yep, okay, Fruit. <laughs> it was endearing the first time, now it's just getting kind of irritating. It was another big rock. I like rocks. Fruit, you are a rock. <laughs> you are literally made of rock. Could you imagine if he's, like, adding it to himself? Maybe. We leave Rock Tunnel, we turn around, and Graveler's just huge. Yeah, <laughs> that's how they get bigger. They just keep adding more rocks to themselves. Oh, I think I had too many rocks. It's like not a shit version of Knack. I liked Knack. Not the game, the character. <laughs> <laughs> the game itself was very mediocre. I was about to say, like, the character seems fine. It's just a very, very mediocre game, and it got a sequel. Why not? Yeah, I don't understand how Knack 2 ever came to be a thing. And then that one actually got wildly inconsistent reviews. Some say it was a vast improvement to the first one, but still kind of mediocre. And then others were like, this is worse than the first game. It's like... Very torn responses on that one. I still remember how wonky knack one story was like throughout that whole, <laughs> throughout that whole game I, I don't even remember most of it i just remember at the time being like constantly going wait what at almost like every other cutscene and not the good kind of wait what it's like the heck you say i i think i vividly remember like I, again i'm very simplified but i just remember what like a whole stretch of the story being like oh th my this person's dead and uh, i'm very sad about that and then halfway through the game oh my god the person i thought was dead is alive but they're working with the enemy yes i'm working with the enemy because you left me to die you abandoned me but i i only abandoned you because i thought you were dead and it's like but now i know you're not so you should come back and join our side no i'm staying with the bad guys and then five minutes later the character's like wait a second i'm working with the bad guys what have i done <laughs> oh god no from what i heard like the main villain was like it got to the point that the plan was so 
not even necessarily evil people are just like should we just work with you we work with you we just asked <laughs> The main villain dies off screen. That's the worst <laughs> part. <laughs> wow. That's how much you give a shit about your villain. Yeah, we killed them off screen. Also, like, I. Okay, la last bit of knack talk because we. That's just, this is not relevant at all to what's going on. Um, I, I think one other issue with it, uh, at least in terms of plot and characters, was the fact that it, the game's called Knack. Knack is not the main character. No. He has no development whatsoever. He has, he literally has nothing. I was about to say like the, the villain getting killed off screen and being wholly purposeless. It's kind of like, you know, the original Helsing. Uh, vaguely. In the original Helsing, the main villain of that series is not even the main villain. Like, he's like an underling to this unseen main enemy, and it turns out that main enemy just gets killed off off-screen. Uh, it's like we never even see them. That sucks. It's like, wow, this is a massive step down from the Major. <laughs> Especially if you watch Helsing Ultimate Furs and then watch that se series. <laughs> You know, I'm going to try and avoid most of the wild battles at this point, because I feel like we've been in this tunnel for hours now, and I just want to get out. <laughs> Day 25. Oh, wait, no, I came this way, crap. <laughs> oh, no, we are actually getting stuck. You know what? This is still... Here we go. This is still better than, like, the caves from Sword and Shield, because the caves were so short. But they were tiny. They were, like, so small. Like, I remember the first one I got to. Like, when I left, I'm like, oh, that was it? I feel like what Sword and Shield need to do, because because of the perspective and everything, this the tunnels get are naturally going to be short. But I feel like to compensate for that, they need to have more outdoors type mazes. Maybe get, maybe okay, tone down on the cave mazes and just have like outdoor ones. Might work a bit better. It just it's just so infuriating because Sword and Shield does a really cool thing where it makes the escape rope a key item. And you never use it. <laughs> yeah, the the escape rope being changed into a key item is like one of the best things that the series has done, but you never need to use it. Yep. That's most probably why they did it as well. It's like, crap, if we, if we have it that they have to buy them, people will get angry. Have it as a key item instead. But then, like, you'd never buy the... You wouldn't have to buy them, because why bother? Like, there's, the caves are so short. I'd say for, like, for the first time, people get, they soon see, see escape rope, like, right, okay, buy some of these, and it's like, oh, I never needed them. I mean, to be fair, like, in previous games, I used to, like, buy quite a few escape ropes just in case, and then ended up never needing them, so... And I never found that to be like, oh, what, the, the game tricked me! I used it just because I was like... It's like, okay, I can't be bothered to go the way I came. Here we go, just get out. <laughs> Speaking of get out, melt, get out. <laughs> I feel like our team's good, but we, ha we have no counters to psychic. Yeah, I, f I think um, I think melt or trogdor might learn bites later on. Anyone that can use bite, I think, like make sure they keep it. That will be very helpful. <laughs> Turns out the only one that gets bite is shield. What a cruel joke that would be. I, I'm pretty sure Mankeys can't learn bite. They have no mouth. Which is actually kind of horrifying. They have no mouth, yet they can scream. <laughs> ba -dum now I just need that gif of the monkey doing the drum set. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sweet. Ultra Balls. Thank you, Ace Trainer. Ooh. Now, where's that Onyx? I mean, she kicked her ass with that bloody Kadabra. I think it's only fair she gave us something good. Yeah, I have no problem with, like, a Kadabra being tough. It's when I get, it, like, like that bloody Eevee on the boat. Yeah. It's like, dear God, what's going on? Okay, what have you got, fella? Oh, this is going to be over quickly. Oh. 
You know how, like, in the anime, Ash's Charizard's got, like, incredibly arrogant and eventually started ignoring him? Why do I get the feeling that, for us, it's going to be Pad? <laughs> oh, don't say that. Because <laughs> he kills everything he touches. <laughs> Nothing survives the Pad. Can you imagine we finally get out the cave and then our, <laughs> our enemy's waiting there and immediately starts a fight? I wouldn't be surprised if uh, team, some Team Rocket Grants were waiting outside. Because I remember that in Silver. Like, you got you went through... I can't remember what cave it was. You got through the cave, and it was quite long and quite early on, so you didn't have the best team. Get through the cave, you're like, okay. Team's taking a beating, but we're, 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 we're near the end. Get outside, Silver's waiting for you, and starts a fight. It's like, oh, god damn it. And this is back in the day when you didn't get healed straight away by a team by a team. Yeah. So it's like, oh no. Maybe that's why they started making the rivals friendlier, so that whenever you had an instance like that, it would be in character for them to go, oh, hang on a second, your Pokemon are, are, are hurt. Okay, let me heal them up for you, and then we can fight. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Because it, be, it would be very inconsistent if, like, you got into a fight with your douchebag rival and they were like, like, you're weak, and I'm going to prove it by destroying you. Oh, hang on, are your Pokemon tired? Hang on, let me heal them up. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I want you to be at your very best. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know what, actually, yeah, that would make sense. You know, if they're like, I'm not going to beat you while your Pokemon are weak, that's our real win. That's our real win. Oh, there we go. Suppose I should have asked while that Flareon was on screen, out of the original three Eeveelutions, who's your favourite? Uh, I think actually Vaporeon. I, you know what, you know what? That's so funny because I would pick Jolteon, which is ju <laughs> which is just like our legendary bird picks. Yeah, I love it. We're always going, but not the fire types. I mean, I'm pretty sure like compet. I don't know how it is now, but I remember for the longest time. Uh, oh, Flareon was useless. Flareon was useless because it learns barely any fire types. It was it was really bad. I think, funny enough, I think it was Gen Four. I think they actually fixed it. Huh, that is funny. Yeah, I think Gen 4 gave it some actual fire-type moves. But even then, I think it's still one of those where it's like, it's not great. Oh, we learned Bite! Yes. Good news. Okay, Melt, you will be our Dark Destroyer. No, I mean our Psychic Destroyer. <laughs> Excellent. Which is which is good, because remember in Origins, Squirtle bit Charmander. Oh, God. In that really horrifying scene. <laughs> I, I, I've rewatched that scene again since, uh, and it's just really funny. It's, it's pretty, like, awful, like, hearing Charmander scream. But, like, it's kind of funny how Red just kind of looks at him for a while, going, um, um, what do I do now? It's like, dude, your Charmander's getting its face ripped off. Do something. <laughs> Tell it to fight back. Or return it. Save it. Do something. Use your other Pokemon. Like... Again, I'm going to bring up Swade's uh, Pokemon uh, recap reviews, but, um, you know, we all make fun of Ash for being dense. Honestly, Red, in the first episode of Origins, is so dumb. A little bit, yeah. And it, obviously, it's meant to, like, again, I'm pretty much paraphrasing what Swade said in his review. He is obviously meant to represent a first-time player, but, like... In universe, he's supposed to be like this big Pokemon fanatic. So when he then tries to capture another trainer's Nidoran, it's like, why would you do that? <laughs> Dude. Like, a player would try it, maybe. But in the context of the world, that makes no sense. Yeah. Not great. Or when, like, he fights Brock, and Brock's telling him, like, you know... Uh, trainers need to take advantage of a wide variety of types, and Red's like, I don't understand what you're saying! <laughs> I remember that breaking suede for a little bit. Again, like, yeah, Ash is dumb, but... Ugh. Not that dumb. I think the big difference is that Red eventually learned from his mistakes in later episodes of Origins, whereas Ash has a tendency of making the same mistakes. Over and over and over again. And also just the writing team continuously making the same decisions. I still remember watching an episode of the Hoenn series and May tries to catch an Azuril 
and all she does is throw a Pokeball at it, and the Azuril bats it away and runs off. And Ash says, oh yeah, don't you know, you need to weaken the Pokemon first before you catch it. And I was like, oh my god, Ash is learning! He's the mentor now, this is great! And then, like, a few episodes later, he does he does the same shit on a Trico. He just throws a Pokeball at it, and he's like, oh, why didn't it capture? And May's like, didn't you tell me not to do that? And I'm like, oh my god. Damn writers. <laughs> Uh, speaking of going back to the Eevees for a second. Oh, yeah. What's your least favorite Eevee? Out of all of them? Yeah. Because it actually wouldn't be Flareon for me. I probably would still pick Flareon. Why? What would you pick? I think it might be actually either between Glaceon or Leafeon. Oh, really? One of the Gen 4 ones? Yeah. Oh, I like them. I don't know why, but I never... I didn't dig them as much as I thought I would. I've got a friend of mine and he, uh, he loves all the Eevee evolutions. And so he really wants to make like a team of all of them, but obviously you can only have six Pokemon at a time, so he's like, crap, i got to choose two not to keep. Those two would be the two I would have picked. A full team of Eevee evolutions wouldn't be a bad team. Oh no, that's a good team. It's quite varied very varied. Especially, again, now that Flareon's actually got on some fire-type moves. Like, um, especially Espeon and Umbreon being as good as they are. Oh, yeah. We should do a Colosseum Let's Play. Ooh! Because I, I don't think I ever actually beat that game. It's been so long since I've played that one. It's been so long since I've played that one. It's been so long since I've played... Um, I need to return this to my friend after so long, but, um, Gale of Darkness? Oh, uh, yeah. Which was, uh, that was a game. I never beat that one either, actually. <laughs> I think I beat it, actually. It was, it was good. Not great, but good. Uh, the the uh, Colosseum and Gale of Darkness are the kind of games where, like, oh, these are really cool conceptually. They could have done a lot more with them. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not. We're not got loads of Pokeballs. I mean, we do. Like, we we have no Great Balls, and we're very low on Ultra Balls. But in terms of basic Pokeballs, we've got tons. We got Pokeballs for days. Why would you go picnicking in a cave? It seems like a really bad place to do it. <laughs> oh, hey, where are we gonna go for a nice picnic in the nice sunshine near the beach? No, in a cold, dark cave. Romantic. She's not even with anyone. She's just on her own. Well, her, <laughs> and, her and her need arena. Then again, that might be the reason why. They're not a people person. Yeah, maybe we're just being super judgmental and we should stop it. Yeah, yeah. She'll be happy once she gets a needle queen. Stop saying it like that. <laughs> you imagine if they make a, jo a, a stand from JoJo that actually looks like a Pokemon? I don't think it will ever happen. Oh, it won't. It won't happen. The stands have such eclectic designs. Okay, what do you got, dude? Oh, I get it. Probably should have swapped Pad out because he can take the hits, but he's looking a bit low on health. Oh, just a tad. Fruit would have been the best option, but he he's uh, running low as well. So uh, let's give Trogdor a shot. I was going to say, our team is really running that. Does Trog Trogdor has Dragon Rage, doesn't it? Yep. Use Dragon Rage, because that's guaranteed 40 health off. Because the Need Arena had uh, Double Kick as well, and our uh, Fruit would probably actually struggle with that a bit. Oh, yeah. I also think at this stage, Dragon Rage will do a shit ton of damage. Yeah. Yep. 
I wonder if uh, Trogdor will learn any other dragon moves. Uh, maybe. It'll probably be like some of the weaker dragon type moves. If he can learn dragon breath, we'll be sorted. That would be really handy. And then if I teach Melton ice type move, it would mean we'd have two Pokemon that can handle a lance when we eventually get to him. I was going to say, our team at the moment is not strong in Psychic and has nothing for Dragon either. They can't really deal with Fighting either. Yeah, we don't really have a Flying type. Well, we will soon. Oh yeah, when Trogdor levels up. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, he's happy. I'm going to leave it at that. But Michael, don't you enjoy hearing about the rocks? It's not even like the cool shiny rocks, you know, like the crystal gems are or some shit like that. It's just regular rocks. Tell me, tell you what, Fruit, you find like an amethyst or something and then I'll be interested. Pulls out amethyst whip. Where did you get that? Also, I'm really glad you spoke just now because I was I thought for a second that the <laughs> that the call cut again. <laughs> Sorry, guys, we have PTSD when it comes to this bloody Skype call. It's going to get to the point where we're going to be doing that in real life. <laughs> I'll say something, you won't respond immediately, and I'll just assume that the Skype call has dropped, even though you're in the same room as me. <laughs> it's like when I come round again, I won't hear you. You'll be like, James, James, where are you? I I'm here, Michael. <laughs> Man, you ima imagine if, like, internet lag works in real life. Oh, God, no. <laughs> that would suck. Aha, your fate didn't work. Every time I use Vine Whip and the health just drops like that. <laughs> Pad is our MVP of this Let's Play so far. I've been saying that for like the last 10 episodes. <laughs> oh, our team is really not doing well. Yeah, I, I, I think we might nearly be out of the cave. I should hope so. <laughs> That's what you said five hours ago. <laughs> We're not lost. We're lost. We're not lost. Where's the map? <laughs> We're not lost. We're just directionally challenged. I don't know why, but I can imagine your dad saying that. <laughs> Here's Vinna. My dad's the kind of person where he will get deliberately lost. Because <laughs> there have been times where we've been on holiday and he'll just go, Oh, what's this way? And he'll just drive off down some random road and we'll just circle around the hills for what feels like hours. Dude, that's my mum. Oh. <laughs> I like getting lost. We find things. No, we don't. We, we, we were on our way home. <laughs> Why? We're going to go this way home. It's literally longer, but it's the scenic route, but it's taking longer. You know what I'm going to do? I think I won't teach. Actually, no, I probably should teach him Thunder. Oh, yeah. Zippy Sap, you have served us well. Served as well, but it's time to now get the Thunder. Like, Thunder has less accuracy, but it's just so strong. And I know Zippy Zap's been killing everything that's come into contact with, but one day we'll find a Pokemon that won't go down in one hit to it. Yeah. Honestly, if if we could somehow teach... Uh, oh god, Fruit stuck again. Hang on, I'm here for you, buddy. There you go. But uh, <laughs> if we could find a way to teach Melt Rain Dance... Ooh. Oh, here's a crystal gem. <laughs> and it's my favourite one, too. <laughs> and fruits just like... Mmm. <laughs> I prefer garnet. <laughs> you know what, fruit? That's fair. Uh, like, I'm not going to disagree with you on that. Ah, oh, guys, we're out the cave. Oh, my God. No oh, God. Natural, Natural light. light. <laughs> When I watched the TFS watch watch that, they all did that in unison, and you could tell they loved that line. It's a good line. Yeah. 
Okay. I think Lavender Town's not too far away. So how about we keep the episode going for just a little bit longer and actually... Oh, yeah, uh, get to the town. Yeah, let's get to Lavender Town and then we'll stop. Oh, no. <laughs> My guy, please. <laughs> Can you imagine if we lose, we black out and we get sent to the other side again? <laughs> That's probably what will happen, because when you black out, you get sent to the last Pokemon Centre you visited. It's like, we gotta go for it all again? Son of a bitch! It's okay. Shield's at full health. And is kicking ass. Oh god, one sand attack. That's it. Shield's never gonna hit again. Because <laughs> that's how these games work. When I use sand attack, it does bugger all. But when the enemy uses sand attack just once, I never hit ever again. But it's okay, we did that. Yeah, that's the exception, not the rule. <laughs> also, really glad I decided to teach Shield Thunderbolt and he's not been able to use it because we fought nothing but rock types. Also, now that I'm taking a proper look at Shield's stats, no wonder he's been going down so easily. Look at his defense. Oh my god, it's his weakest stats. <laughs> it just goes to show how well Shield's been doing lately. We need to, like, maybe when we get to uh, Celadon, if we can find those, like, stat boosting items, you know, like carbon and stuff, we'll find the one that raises defense and just yeah. shove them down the Shield's throat. Oh shit. Not very effective, takes off more than half Shield's health. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, this one hit. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shield. I'm sorry. Bye, buddy. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, don't Oh, no. Don't panic. We can still win this. Okay. Um, we might have to do what I sometimes do in the Pokemon League. Sacrificial lambs to get the teammates that are useful to get full health. And this is why we don't play Nuzlocks. Yeah. <laughs> God, can you imagine? Okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's still good. It's still good. Look, fine whip. There we go. When in doubt, have Pad use fine whip. Never fails. At least we're going to have a bit of money. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god, that's another thing I remember from Sword and Shield. That place where you could buy the money increasing items. Oh yeah. Buying quite a few of those and making a crap ton of bank. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, it's here. I might as well use it. Okay, I was really trying to avoid using too many healing items because we're probably really close to the next town, but we're getting dangerously low and I don't want to take any chances. Because it'll happen, folks. We'll get sent back to the other place. And if we have to go for this again, you are joining us. No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> it's like everyone's like, why is this episode like two hours long? Oh. Oh, no. And now we're going to fight no other t trainers. No, 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 there's definitely some more. I can see them. If you send out a grass type, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're feeling faint, should I don't think having a Pokemon fight is a good idea. Do you want to lie down? There's a nice flower bed over there. Have a nice lay down. Aha! I knew you'd do that! I totally didn't just get lucky. I was waiting for it to go, Pikachu used Surf! <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> did you ever get the Surfing Pikachu from Pokemon Yellow? Because I could never figure out how to get it. I don't think I did, no. Sh I wanted it. I knew it existed, but I just couldn't figure out how to get it. I think it's you had to win the minigame a certain amount of times and all these other hoops to go through. 
and child me did not have the patience for it. <laughs> To be fair, I don't think child me even knew how to do it, so. <laughs> it's only much later when I'm like, wait, I was supposed to do this when I was a child? How? I miss Arpeggioto. I do too. Maybe that's a thing that maybe like... Nah, but then I require having to train two Pokemon up. Like, swap out Shield with Arpeggioto on occasions. I, I get it, but I don't think it's really worth it. Besides, Ch Chicken did Chicken did his job fine. He's now enjoying uh, his retirement at Professor Oaks. He's enjoying his time on the farm. Yeah. And like an actual farm, not like the metaphorical farm. Pokemon farm? Oh my god, is there, is there a Pokemon equivalent to Animal Farm? Oh, you mean the book? Yeah. Maybe. We joked last time that all the movies have like just got Pokemon equivalents, so maybe all the books do too. How to kill a Picky Peck or something. I would not want to watch the Pokemon equivalent of Watership Down, put it that way. Just a bunch of bunnelbees ripping their throats out. <laughs> oh god! Oh, this was not a good day for you, my friend. And down it goes. Oh no, that said that melt flat. Yep. It's okay, Pikachu, you're fine. <laughs> yes, that, that Pika was like, Ah, oh, Sand Slash! <laughs> get me out of here! No, no, it's the, Get me the hell out of here! <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't believe Pikachu said the H word. Did people actually make a big thing out of that? Oh, I'm sure somebody must have done. If you fit... If you're in the world and you think that hell was the worst swear word? Bless you. I mean, it's still kind of shocking to hear Pikachu say that. A little bit. I think I'd, I'd be more like the F word or something. I'd be like, whoa! It would be pretty funny if they snuck in like one minute where... I, I, wait, no, I know for a fact because Ryan Reynolds even said that there are bloopers for that film. And I am pr so... I'm pretty sure behind the scenes he cursed a ton. Oh, probably. Somewhere there are recordings of Ryan Reynolds as Pikachu swearing up a storm, and I want to hear it. So do I. I know that um, in S Into the Spider-Verse, John Mulaney swore a crap ton as um, Spider-Ham. I love that story so much, because he didn't know it was a kid's film. Yeah. <laughs> like, they, ju they just said, oh, like, uh, do some ad-lib in a bit, just have fun with the character. And he did, and then they said afterwards, by the way, it's a kid's film. And he's like, oh, you can't use anything I just said then. <laughs> Oh, good old John Mulaney. I I think the line I love the most for that that bit was where he's like, where oh, I think the context he's just been told that Miles has been spider man for like two days, and he's like, two days. <laughs> I've been spider man thirty years. <laughs> oh. That movie was great. I know Spider Verse Two is out 20, 2022, but I'm like, oh, but I want it now though. <laughs> Just how good the first one was. Like, we want it, the sequel now. It's like on the one hand, franch I'm sick of franchising, and I wish like not every studio was trying to make like a movie blow out into this big media franchise or something. But then Spider Verse happens, and I'm like, yes, make this a franchise, please. I want more. It's like how games are doing at the moment, like um, Horizon Zero Dawn has now turned into a trilogy. Well, that's the rumour, but it's a, I honestly totally believe that that's what's happening. Yeah. Also, plot. Ooh. Oh, this Lavender Town remix is really good. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, though, we're going to stop here, because quite frankly, I'm already tired, and uh, <laughs> Lavender Town's got a lot going on. It's got a lot going on, and we have 
we spent a lot of time in that cave. Yeah, exactly. So uh, next time we will be exploring Lavender Town and heading into the Pokemon Tower and seeing what uh, that's going on with that Cubone there. So until then, this is Michael Beckwith saying goodbye. This is James Hall saying goodbye. And we'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Bye.